Hey guys, Spud here, as always, and today we're going to take a look at using the AN-AVQ-23 Pave Spike in conjunction with laser guided bombs on the DCS F4E Phantom 2. I have seen a lot of people in the community and many in my own little Discord community say that using laser guided bombs with the Pave Spike pod on the F4E is some sort of rocket surgery or analog voodoo magic. But today's video is all about trying to show you guys how simple and easy it can be to shack a target with the AVQ-23. Setting proper expectations of the capabilities of the Pave Spike Pod is absolutely essential to alleviate a lot of frustrations that I've been seeing people have with the system. The Pave Spike Pod was only the second widely used targeting pod ever produced, and as such comes with the same limitations you would expect of early 1970s technology. It should also be noted that laser-guided and TV-guided munitions were initially developed in the 1960s to destroy large, hardened, and mostly stationary known targets such as the Dragon's Jaw or Paul Domer Bridges, power plants, Soviet command and control bunkers, as well as Soviet warships. So if your mission is to go truck or tank blinking, bring a triple rack of AGM-65 Mavericks. But if you absolutely need to take down a bridge across the Red River, a Pave Spike and a GBU-10 is your go-to. Pave Spike and self-lazing skills and capabilities are extremely important for the DCS Cold War pilot because for most nations around the world, the F-4D and E-Phantom II was the only aircraft capable of delivering precision-guided warheads on foreheads throughout the 1970s and well into the 1980s, with Pave Spike pods still in use on Turkish F-4E Phantom IIs today. Okay guys, we're back in the cockpit of the F4E together, and like I said in the intro, today is all about demystifying the Pave Spike pod and self-guiding laser-guided bombs into a target in your Phantom II. To further that objective, let's first take a look at some of the most basic keybinds you're going to need to have set in order to use the most basic delivery method of the Pave Spike pod. We'll first go ahead and hit the escape key here and we'll go over to adjust controls. And we need to make sure that we are in the F4E category. And then for the subcategory, we need to scroll all the way down to the bottom to the Wizzo temporary category. The first keybind we're gonna need to have set is gonna be the hand control challenge button. This is gonna allow us to step between the two zoom options that are available to us in the Pave Spike pod. Next, we're going to need to have the antenna hand control slew function bound in some fashion to slew the pave spike pod around the target area. I currently have this set to a uh, axis on my throttle of my HOTAS. Next, we're going to need the full action and half action antenna hand control triggers bound as well, so that way we can throw the pave spike pod into track mode. When it comes to these keybinds, you're going to need to have these set if you are flying as a single human pilot up front and Jester as your Wizzo in the backseat. However, if you're flying with a human Wizzo, a lot of these same kind of basics of using the Pave Spike pod are going to apply. So let's go ahead and set up the cockpit of our Phantom 2 for the delivery of our LGBs with our Pave Spike pod. Throwing the LCOS into air to ground mode will slave the Pave Spike pod to the Pipper in the basic 12 viz or 12 o'clock visual mode of the Pave Spike targeting pod. We'll ensure that our fuses for our weapons are in fact armed, and we'll select the two stations on our aircraft we currently have LGBs hung on. For our delivery mode, we're going to select target find with a couple right clicks there. Target Find is a very similar cousin to Dive Toss and Dive Laydown Mode. It simply replaces the ranging information from the radar with ranging information from the laser rangefinder in the Pave Spike Pod. For our weapons, we'll select Bombs, 
and we're going to drop two GPU 12s with a single pass today, so quantity is going to be set to two. We're also going to set our DSCG scope to TV mode to get the video feed from our Pave Spike Pod. And we'll finish up here by setting our master arm switch to the arm position. We're going to check to ensure we've done everything correctly by seeing two amber arm lights on the stations we have selected for our LGBs. Next, we're going to go ahead and open up our bombing table by pressing the B key on our keyboard. So that way we can get the drag coefficient for our GPU 12s for our specific release altitude and airspeed. For mode of delivery, we're going to scroll down to target fine. For type of bomb, we'll scroll all the way to the bottom of the list and select GPU 12, of course. For run-in speed, I always like to set about 500 knots of true airspeed because that's a very easily attainable airspeed without having to think about it too much. Release altitude will be 18,000 feet and target altitude will be at sea level for today. That will calculate our drag coefficient, and now all we need to do is tell Jester and we're set and ready to go with our WRCS set for the release of our weapon. Next, we're going to go ahead and open up the Jester wheel, go to air to ground weapons, the pave spike pod, laser code, and we'll ensure that Jester has the correct laser code set for the weapons that are hung on our aircraft. Today that's going to be one triple nickel. We're now done with the setup of our targeting pod and our aircraft for the release of our weapon, and now we're down to the technique of using the pave spike pod to get an LGB onto target. What I like to do is pre-zoom in my pave spike pod by using that antenna hand control challenge button, and we can see that very cool little effect of the pod optically zooming in and out when we press that button. And at this point, we're just going to start to take a look at the area around us and find our target. It can be very helpful to have a waypoint placed on top of your target area, so that way you at least know where to point the nose of your jet, because this is going to be done all visually. We can see the apron down at this airfield here on the Sinai map where two IL-76s, which are going to be our targets for today, are placed. Once we have a general idea of where our target is located, we're then going to start a very gentle shallow dive looking to get the pipper of our LCOS onto our target area. Then, moving our eyes from the LCOS down to the DSCG scope, once we can see the basic area of the target in the field of view of our pave spike pod, we're going to squeeze the antenna hand control trigger down to the second detent to place the pave spike pod into track mode. We know that the pod is in track mode when we start to see TTG and T0 indications up in the field of view of our pave spike pod. With a solid non-flashing T0, we know that the pod is officially in track mode. The flashing TTG means that the pod is out of range of the laser and it's not getting valid laser ranging information. At this point, we just need to kind of use our sloop controls in order to kind of keep the field of view of the pod somewhere in the general vicinity of the target we intend to destroy. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. At this point in the bombing run, we're just closing the range to our target in order to get within range of the laser ranging function of our pave spike pod. And you'll see that the drift of our targeting pod here will get smaller and smaller as we get closer to our target because the error of the information that the pave spike pod is receiving from our INS is getting smaller and smaller the closer we get to the target. And you'll see that drift cease entirely once we get within valid laser ranging range of the target. Let's see if we can say range a couple more times. So we can see it's starting to get more and more steady, even though we're still outside of laser ranging range. Alright, we're now close enough to the target that we can get valid laser ranging information from the pave spike pod and we can see the TTG indication in the scope has now transformed to a solid line rather than a flashing line. And it will start to move down the field of view of our pave spike pod, and when it reaches T0, that's when the weapon is going to fall away from our aircraft. 
At this point, I'm not overly concerned with keeping my crosshair of the pave spike directly on top of the target that I intend to destroy. I just want to have it somewhere in the neighborhood so that way we can get a good accurate weapons drop somewhere within the laser basket. Because just flying the F4E is a hard enough task for us, and then once the weapon is off and away from the aircraft and falling down to the target, that's when we'll worry about actually guiding it directly into our intended victim. So we'll continue on here and we'll press and hold the bomb button to bring up the steering cues onto the LCOS for a good accurate weapon release, as well as to authorize the WRCS to drop the weapon at the appropriate time for the most accurate impact into our target. So we're just continuing on here, pressing and holding that bomb button the whole time, and that's why we're hearing that tone, letting us know we're authorizing the aircraft to drop, and we're getting those valid steering cues on the LCOS. Any second here, and bombs away. Okay, now that the weapon is released off of our aircraft and falling down into that laser basket, we can now start to concentrate on lining up our crosshair as accurately as possible on top of our intended target. Keep in mind here, with the Pave Spike Pod, firing the laser is completely automatic, and we don't have to worry about that here. Also keep in mind there are no time to impact indications available with the Pave Spike and the F4E. Any moment now. And... Shack. Awesome. Right on target and that IL-76 will never be flying again. So as you can see here guys, also the Pave Spike pod does not rotate the field of view of the video feed over in order to compensate for the feed becoming upside down as you fly over and away from the target. Now I'm going to squeeze the antenna hand control trigger to the first detent to re-slave the Pave Spike targeting pod back to the pipper dot on my LCOS to set up for our re-attack on that second IL-76. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed our overview of the setup and workflow of a basic laser guided bomb attack profile using the AVQ-23 Pave Spike Pod. Hopefully this video showed you that it's not nearly as insane as some tutorials and the manual make it out to be. And once you're up and running with this basic profile, you'll be able to expand how you use the pod and take full advantage of the flexibility it unlocks for the F4E Phantom 2. So if you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Fly safe out there and enjoy this beautiful game.